In today's media narrative, Jesus Christ is often depicted as a weak man. But this is a gross misinterpretation. The Jesus Christ of the Bible is no weakling. Imagine the strongest person you know. Could they withstand the torment of crucifixion? Even if they could bear the physical pain, could they carry the weight of humanity's collective sin? 1 Corinthians 1.25 reminds us that what might be seen as God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3, 9, that Jesus is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But as 2 Timothy notes, people have a hard time enduring sound doctrine. This is evident in society's actions, such as the removal of prayer from schools in 1962, and the acceptance of over 62 million abortions since the Roe v. Wade decision in 1973. The media and Hollywood often ignore or openly mock Jesus Christ. How often do we see public figures silenced for acknowledging Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? How many churches have adapted to the world, rather than encouraging the world to adapt to God's teachings? It's a sad time when pro-life activists are arrested for peaceful protests, while those who deface pro-life pregnancy resource centers often go unpunished. We live in an era where traditional family values and respect for parents and God are often portrayed as outdated concepts. Meanwhile, the entertainment industry often promotes satanic symbols and occult messages. In these times, those who hold traditional values are often canceled by society. Instead, there is a push for a global government, with sustainable development goals and stakeholder capitalism laying the groundwork, while many are oblivious. With the rise of quantum computing and artificial intelligence, we are fast approaching the time of the tribulation period described in the Bible. A time of a one-world government controlled by licenses, data, and the mark, with AI potentially giving life to the image of the beast as described in Revelation 13:15, We are witnessing nations including the United States turning their backs on Israel, just as the Bible predicted for the end times. In Zechariah 12, 3, God warns that in that day will he make Jerusalem a burdensome stone, and that any people or nation that rises against Jerusalem will be cut in pieces though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. As Matthew 24, 33 states, when we see these events unfolding, we can know that the tribulation period is imminent. Have you ever pondered the profound question, what is the essence of faith and salvation? To find answers, we delve into the rich truth of the Bible, the sacred text that has shaped the lives of millions across the globe. According to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God does not instill in us a spirit of fear. Instead, he offers us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. This spirit is rooted in trust, specifically in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Despite the looming tribulation period and the impending arrival of the Antichrist, those who have found salvation in Jesus Christ have no reason to fear. They are reassured by the word of God that the devil will ultimately be defeated. Yet, the urgency of the present moment cannot be understated. The message of salvation through Jesus Christ needs to be shared with those who are lost. It is crucial to ensure that these individuals are taken up in the rapture, as described in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. This way they won't have to endure the tribulation period and encounter the Antichrist and his mark. The belief in a pre-tribulation rapture is rooted in the notion that those who accept Jesus Christ's free gift of salvation are not destined for wrath but for salvation as stated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. The upcoming tribulation period signifies God's wrath being poured out on earth, a consequence of humanity's rejection of him and his offer of salvation. The Bible paints a vivid picture of the tribulation period and the return of Christ, a time of profound transformation and renewal. The book of Revelation in particular is brimming with such prophecies. Revelation chapter 18 verse 8 warns of the impending plagues, death, and mourning that will befall the beast system, which will be ultimately destroyed. Therefore, Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 urges people to forsake the beast system, to avoid partaking in its sins and receiving its plagues. In Revelation chapter 19, we see Jesus returning to earth to vanquish the Antichrist and the false prophet. The chapter describes how a sharp sword emerges from Jesus' mouth symbolizing his power to smite those who serve the Antichrist. Jesus is depicted as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who leads an army against the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies. The Antichrist, referred to as the beast, and the false prophet who performed miracles to deceive those who received the mark of the beast, are cast 
into a lake of fire by Jesus and his army, as stated in Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. Following this, an angel descends from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit, binding the devil for a thousand years. Those who resisted the beast and his mark rule alongside Jesus on earth during this period. When the thousand years elapse, Satan is released from his prison to deceive the nations once again. However, God's divine protection prevails, and Satan is cast into the lake of fire and brimstone joining the beast and the false prophet. In conclusion, the Bible presents the truth of faith, salvation, and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. It reaffirms the power of trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and underscores the importance of sharing the message of salvation. Despite the trials and tribulations foretold, those who embrace the Word of God have nothing to fear, for they are destined not for wrath but for salvation. In the Bible it is written that, after the devil is cast into the lake of fire, the dead, irrespective of their stature in life, will stand before God. The books will be opened, and another book, known as the Book of Life, will also be opened. Every person will then face judgment based on the deeds inscribed in these books. Following this, death and hell themselves will be cast into the lake of fire, marking what the Bible refers to as the second death. Yet what follows is a vision of hope and renewal. The Apostle John shares that he saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The sea as we know it ceased to exist. John then describes the site of the holy city, the new Jerusalem descending from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. A great voice from heaven proclaims, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with the people on earth. He will dwell with them, they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. In this new world, God will wipe away all tears. There will be no more death, no sorrow, no crying, and no pain. All the former things will have passed away. Such a vision of the future brings hope and reassurance in these uncertain times. If you haven't yet, consider accepting Jesus Christ's free gift of salvation. He promises to prepare your heart and mind, offering a peace that surpasses all understanding as it says in Philippians 4, 7. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Embrace the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ and experience the peace and hope it brings.